Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. Uh, per usual, keeping Soapy out of the studio. Not too really worried about it anymore. It's been months since he's tried to do anything. We're on the same page with security. They keep giving us a security guard every week, which we're very fortunate for. But my guest this week, uh, Kendall Reyes. Kendall, welcome to the show. Glad to uh, have you, man. Thanks for having me, man. It's, it's, been, it's been too long, but I'm glad we were able to make it happen. Yeah, no, no. Very happy to have you, and uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Um, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Absolutely. So, um, from Nashville, New Hampshire, uh, born and raised, grew up in Syracuse. Oh, yeah. Uh, one street away from, uh, from this family over here, the Bolio <laughs> family. Uh, so, that, that was quite an experience. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I really think about, like, my childhood growing up, and it was, it was awesome. I, like, you know, not everyone could really, you know, have that, you know, they truly enjoyed their, their childhood growing up, but, like, our neighborhood was sick. Like, so like we, we, we had a dope neighborhood, um, just always playing games, always something to do. Um, everyone looked out for each other. That, that was the coolest part. Um, and we just had a lot of fun. We were, we were just like, we were just a bunch of kids being kids. And, um, you know, so that, so that was really cool. So uh, growing up in Nashua, um, you know, best place to live. Don't, Twice, <laughs> don't Twi disagree two with that. times, two right? Times. Yeah, two-time champ. I will say we used to play football on the street, and I think mm -hmm. I was 18, and you were 13. And I couldn't cover you, and I go, "Oh man, this is not good." Like I'm 18, I can't even cover a 13-year-old. <laughs> Luckily, you ended up in the NFL. I said, "All right, I don't feel too bad about myself." Yeah, now. yeah, no, it, it ended up working out. But I'm telling, like those, that, like that. I mean, that's like where my hunger from football came from. Is like you know playing in the, you know, in the streets with with everyone. So no, it was. Uh, you know, that, that, that's where it all started. So, you know, it's really cool. And I'm glad to be able to kind of circle back and, you know, jump on the show with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, now, what's three things that everybody should know about you? Three things that everybody should know about me. We used to do one, but I think three, we get to know the guests a little bit more before we go in. Okay, that that's fair. Three things everyone should know about me. Um, man, I just, I love being around people. Um, uh, I'm a people person. I just love, love community. I love bringing people together. I love, um, you know, the result from it, you know, it's, uh, I, th I think it's one of the coolest things, um, you know, that, that we could do is, because I mean, we're, we're all so different and, uh, but then again, we also, we have so many things that we have in common and then we have like, and then we could celebrate our differences and all that. So one definitely love, you know, whatever it is, cookouts, going to a game, any of that stuff. I'm always just trying to get people together. Uh, two, um, man, what was the question that people don't know about me or yeah, should know about that me? that should know about you. Um, should know about me. Uh, that they might yeah, not know. That they might not know. <laughs> um, I guess I used to play football. No, <laughs> no man, I just, I, I love being a dad. Like, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. My kids are everything to me. I mean, half my social media is just, <laughs> my kids just running around. Um, so no, that's uh, definitely, you know, being together with everyone, being a dad, uh, you know, those are like my two favorite things to do. Um, just run around with, with those guys and watching them grow, try, obviously trying to get them to sports. I feel like that's like every, every dad's yeah. like, all right, yeah, 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 your job is to get a scholarship. Like that's my job in the house, Yeah, you know? So, uh, I love doing that. And last thing, um, I don't know. I don't think you know about me. Um, I like rom coms. Okay. It's a little random, but I uh, I, I like a good ro romantic comedy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, what's a rom now? Yeah, I know yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you if you're not deep yeah. in that world, <laughs> if you're not deep in the rom com world, yeah, yeah, yeah romantic comedy for the. Uh, do you like when Harry met Sally? Because I feel like that's the one that I just I feel like it's classic. I so wow, like I have not watched that one. If you're into romantic comedies, I, and just for the Let Freedom Ring audience, I'm not too diehard on those. Um, but it is. I mean, it kind of sounds like you are. I mean, well, we don't want to get to my soft side. Okay, show, hey, you, know. you know, there's nothing no wrong. There's nothing wrong with uh, letting people see the soft side. Yeah. No, but that that's awesome. But um, and the last question, stick with the theme of the show, and this means yeah. a lot of different things to a lot yeah. of different people. What does it mean to you be uh, an American? To be an American, uh, for me, I think, I mean, when you think about, you know, the name of our country, United States of America, I mean, so, you know, first part being united, you know, so that basically means that, 
people come from different areas, different places, you know, we're all, and all brought together. And I think that's uh, the absolute best thing about being American is, I mean, think about it. I mean, we're, we're all, <coughs> we're all immigrants at one point or another. Um, you know, we came to this country, you know, looking for a better life. And, um, you know, that, that opportunity is still here today. And I love it. You know, my, um, my father was, was born in Trinidad and Tobago and he was able to make a great life for, for himself over in this country. And, you know, it's a, it's a land of opportunity. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. No place is. But uh, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, it's a big community of a bunch of different people. And, you know, um, everyone has that, that chance, that ability to, you know, make something of themselves. Um, you know, make something for their families, uh, no matter what their prior situation was, there's, um, you know, there, there, there's a chance, you know, to, to, to better yourself. Awesome. I like that answer. Yeah, that's, that's obviously blood free and ring. We love that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, for sure. Let's get in your football career yeah. a little bit because this a lot that went on. Mm -hmm. um, you ended up at UConn. How did you decide on UConn? Yeah, so UConn, um, going back to high school, um, you know, kind of after my junior year, had a, had a really good year. That's kind of when, you know, even it was even a possibility to play college football. I was, which was awesome. Like, um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, UNH, so really it came down to UNH and UConn. Um, BC, I thought BC was in there, but they kind of were just, you know, it, it never really came about to anything. So, um, so it really came down to UNH and UConn. Um, and, you know, UNH being, you know, hometown, Coach Roby, my high school coach, who's from there, Coach Mack, you know, everybody, it was, it was right up the road. Um, and, you know, UConn, it was, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Actually, I never even heard of UConn football until I got No, <laughs> you always it think was, basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, like, you, you don't even think about it. But once, um, you know, once they started recruiting me and obviously looked into it and, saw what an incredible program they had and how much they were investing into the program. Uh, that was amazing. So I went down, they had these top-notch facilities, uh, brand new stadium. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, being home, you know, staying in the home or do I try something different? Um, and the thing, about, the, the thing about UConn is it's, I mean, I'm from Nashua. It's 90 minutes away. Yeah. It was always kind of the funny thing uh, growing up. Like, hey, you know, you guys come down for a visit. They're like, oh, man, like, that's so far away. It's almost in New York. I'm like, yeah. dude, I literally live an hour, yeah. like, <laughs> an hour and a half away from, from Nashua. But, uh, yeah, it ultimately came down to, I was like, I wanted, still want to be close to home, but I just want to try something different. I mean, I knew what UNH had for me, and, uh, you know, I was definitely excited about that, but I was just like, you know, I want to try something different, and... The story where to where I actually committed to UConn, or in my mind I committed, I didn't verbally <laughs> commit that day, was um, it was UConn versus Pittsburgh. I believe it was a double overtime, or it might have been just an overtime game. Um, then DJ Hernandez, he scores a touchdown, and then he just takes the football and like threw it out the stadium. And I was just like, yeah, that like that <laughs> moment. It was like a Thursday night game, like crowd was going nuts. I'm like. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming here. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, it was just, you know, it, it was it was a fresh, brand new opportunity. Still close, but uh, able to, you know, venture out on my own a little bit too. Awesome, awesome. I mean, there's not like there's not a lot in Connecticut. That's like the first thing I think of. Yeah, <laughs> I think of yeah. Connecticut is UConn. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I mean, yeah, UConn. You got Hartford. Uh, then you kind of think of, oh yeah, it's near next to New York, New yeah. York. but uh, no, uh, Connecticut's a pretty cool, pretty pretty cool spot. Look, before we go on, a lot of Yankee fans at the at the school. Uh, pretty... yeah, no, it was um, it was definitely like split. Connecticut is like it know. was split. No, so UConn, or at least to my knowledge. So yeah. I mean, this is let's just let's just throw that out there. Yeah, it kind of starts. It splits around Hartford. Okay. So so most of so more most of Connecticut, but like but the other side of Hartford. They're they're still diehard, you know, New England, diehard uh, Boston. Then you know you flip to the other side of Hartford. Then you know kind of get a little mixed bag. But obviously, the closer you get to the city, it's all Giants, New York teams. So 
Um, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a divide over there. Uh, I, feel like we, I feel like dividing part of that same be like this half's New England, this half can go be with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll stop. Yeah, New England <laughs> stops on this side of Hartford. Um, what was your favorite moment playing college? Oh man, I don't say I have too many, but the one that stands out the most, um, or I guess probably has the biggest impact, is when we went on a run. Um, so my redshirt junior year. We had a really good team, but we just we didn't start off for for whatever reason losing games like last minute. Um, but like we're like I mean we're we're a good team. What are we doing? So we kind of all sat down together and like, hey man, this shit stops here. Let's turn it around. We ended up winning the next five games in a row. Um, then we beat South Florida on like a my my, my roommate actually uh, Dave Tiger kicked like a fifty three yard field goal oh, wow. for us to secure. Um, the BCS bid and uh, in the Big East. Um, so just that moment, you know, hitting that, considering like how that season started, the way we ended, um, you know, the regular season, knowing what was on the line, uh, that plane ride home was fun, everything about it. Yeah, that was that was that was a super dope moment. Yeah, that's got to be hard to top. Yeah, um, there is a moment that I want to talk about. Yeah, because everybody knows how much I love Notre Dame since I was a kid. Yes. Um, you have this, so I think it's 2009. Yes. I'm watching the game. Uh, Jimmy Clausen is the quarterback. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm torn. I'm rooting for Notre Dame. I'm like, oh, Kendall's in this game too. Yep, yep. Who, who am I going to root for? And I think you have the sack on Clausen. Leads to a fumble. I, you guys get the ball back and end up beating Notre Dame. Yes. Which I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, wow. Yeah. Um, I think I ran into you at the bar and you're like, you had some choice words for Jimmy Clausen. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't make it to, you know, we were rooting for him in the NFL. Uh, uh, what's that like being, no, was that in, was that? that was, yeah, that was, in, that was in South Bend, yeah. Wow. Uh, like, I, I was heartbroken. I was happy for you. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, like, you it. know. I get it, yeah. What's that like, just winning at Notre Dame? That, that moment was huge. Because, um, so that year, if we rewind a little bit, so my, uh, our, my teammate passed away. Same thing. Like, that, that, uh, that. 2009 2010 team we have an incredible team um like so much time i mean like we put like over 30 guys in the nfl from from that you know from that time period so just kind of just to give you a little context on like how good our team was um so he ended up passing away tragically you know towards the beginning mid beginning of the season and um and so we were like all right so we dedicated the rest of the season to, uh, to him and then we just I believe we we had two really really close games. Um, Might have been three. It's kind of hard to remember at this point. Um, super close. Played West Virginia tough. Like we played really good opponents tough, but like just couldn't find a way to win. So now we go into Notre Dame, and you know still trying to get that first win for them. Um, so it was like one, yeah, we beat Notre Dame, but two, that was our first win, you know, for our for our teammate Jazz. So like. It it hits on multiple levels for me, like Notre, like on you know really on both sides, like you know that was a huge win we got we got you know against I mean you know one of the, literally probably the most prestigious you know program in in the country, and we're able to you know kind of get the monkey off our back and you know start winning again and you know we we were able to close out that season too so um, you know that that was huge and. Um, you know, and we're like, <laughs> the thing we kind of joke around is like, yeah, we definitely got Charlie Charlie Weiss fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you like you, to, you lose a UConn. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that that's so. No, it was cool. So it was definitely a pretty pretty cool moment. Pretty incredible game. I I, yeah. I, I do want to get. I've never been that stage in my life. I do want to do that one time. Oh, you got to. Um, you got to go. Yeah, it was just, special. Just once. But uh, so then you get drafted by the Chargers mm-hmm. uh, in 2012. Um, were you expecting this was the team you were going to? Um, I had I had a little bit of inkling. So, um, but you, you still, I mean, you still don't know. So, I mean, everyone's you know knows about like you know after like your last year or whenever you declare eligible for the for the draft, you have the combine, you know, pro day, um, you know. So, but there's actually a little bit a little bit of time in between you know pro days and and the actual draft itself. So during that time period, you know, teams will work you out. 
uh, you're going to team visit. So the two teams that I visited was, uh, was Denver, uh, the Broncos, and, um, and the Chargers. So does that necessarily mean those are the teams that are going to draft you? It doesn't, but you know, it kind of they at least somewhat like you. They, yeah. I mean, you know, they they wouldn't send you there for no reason. Um, so those are team two teams that I that I went on the in person visit on. Came back home, just was working out. So, um, but yeah, when I got the call, I mean, it said California. I mean, there's three teams <laughs> in California, yeah. so you're kind of like, who is this? Yeah, you know, who is it? Then it's like, okay, I mean, you know, the Chargers are coming up, coming up next, so. Um, yeah, so I had a small inkling that when, when they drafted me and all that, it made sense. But that day, you have no clue. You have absolutely no clue what's going to happen. I mean, you know, so it was, uh, I don't know, it was pretty cool. Yeah, we were, I know we were all watching because we knew you were going. We knew, some, you know, yeah. and so it was a lot of fun to, to watch that. And then it was the Chargers, like, all right, I, I, yeah. I, 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 Doug Flutie played there, all right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm good, cool with the Chargers. Yeah, exactly. Um, any thoughts going through your mind? Like, were you nervous at all? Or were you just like, you know? Yeah, like, so, so what we did, we rented, a, like, a house up in Maine. Just, like I said, you know, like, I kind of, you know, who I am. I love having my family together. I love, so I just wanted, you know, you know, immediate family, like, you know, a few close friends. Uh, you know, my dad came up Florida, you know, so I just wanted everyone under one roof. Um, so we were there. So the I think we got there maybe a Thursday night, uh, Thursday. So so they started doing the first round on yeah, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So they started doing the first round. Still, yeah, they are doing that still. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I was just like, I'm not like I was knew I wasn't going first round, but hey, I mean, like I said, you still never know. Yeah. Um, so I was actually super chill the first night. Um, funny side story with that. So, uh, the year I came out, this guy, Kendall Wright, uh, got drafted. I believe he's from Baylor. He got drafted to the Titans. Um, so my uncle, you know, you know, I had a couple drinks or, I mean, we we're all, you know, and, uh, there's like, you know, you heard the doo 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 boo boo. He's yep, like, yep. Kendall, he starts, oh, freaking, I'm like. <laughs> He starts freaking out. He's all excited. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, it's Kendall Wright. It's, it's somebody else. He's like, what? That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty funny. My, uncle, my uncle's hilarious. Um, but yeah, no, super chill. Uh, that whole, that first night. The second second day, I woke up. Little, little butterflies go out. We actually played, you know, football on the beach. So that was cool. But uh, had lunch. But after that, so kind of from like the three to... Whenever the draft, the eight o'clock window, yeah, I, like you know, yeah. start starting to, to to set in a little bit, and you know that's when you know everyone from home is texting and you know calling and texting. So I'm like, my phone's blown up, so I can't even can't even look at my phone. <laughs> um, so yeah, then that's kind of a little settled in. Then as the draft starts, then it's like. Man, it, like it took forever. Like I mean, it probably was only like I don't know hour half into oh, they're, they're just it. Two trying, hours. Yeah, in. they're trying to get the commercials. Oh in yeah, and yeah. And I'm just like, then you kind of like, then you get like, man, like, am I even gonna get drafted? Like, is this yeah. a thing? Like, you know. So yeah, I mean, every single thought you you know you go through it. Then when the call comes in, it's like, holy shit. You know, I looked at my girlfriend now wife, Chris, and I'm like, like that's a team. Like yeah. this, like this is real. So that was uh, you know, it was a definitely incredible moment. Yeah, that that's and I I can't think of anybody from Nashville going like being drafted on television like because I know didn't Cole he ended up there. Yep, Cole played a few years. Was he unsigned? I think yeah. he, I think he was a free agent. Okay. Played a few years. He got banged up. Um, but yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, not not, not to my. I'm knowledge. pretty sure every you know yeah. anybody that knows anything about football in Nashville was watching that draft. Yeah, no, yeah. it was it was definitely pretty you know pretty so, cool moment. Yeah. Very very awesome. Yeah. Um, any favorite moments with the Chargers? Yeah, uh, San Diego. I mean, it, it was cool. It's like, you know, you go in as a rookie, you don't know what to expect, all those, all that stuff. And um, you know, one of the funniest people, you know, the captain of the team, their center, Nick Hardwick. You know, he's just hilarious, constantly always messing with people, but like in a, like a funny way like if he messed with you it was almost like an honor yeah you know you know one, one of those type of things and first person uh, I met from the team was Phil uh, awesome dude down to earth and the thing that's cool about Phil he'll he'll 
chit chat. He'll hang with any person it's in like the locker room. He's like a high room. school coach now. Yeah. yeah. And he's, 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 <laughs> had, I, yeah. I need to check in to see how he do. Yeah. But like, man, he he was an incredible leader. Um, and like he was like he's hilarious. Like you know, and that that's probably what I miss the most about you know any locker room. But you know, that I felt like Miss. Man, the amount of time I spent laughing throughout the day, I was just like, like, not not everyone gets gets to experience this. Like, I literally laugh all day, and I go get get to play football. Of course, yeah, we're all working our butts off, but it's just like it was uh, this definitely a special time. And um, yeah, I mean, for as for moments with the Chargers, I mean, whew, I mean, honestly, first stepping out on the field, it was a preseason game, but. Everything, like this is yeah. I mean, now, yeah. to the fans, it might be a preseason, but to yeah. us, it, it, yeah. you know, it, it's a real game. That's yeah. the Dallas Cowboys that are, that are across from you. Um, you know, that's that's the you know 49ers. Um, you know, we we had a playoff run. Um, you know, which was really cool that second year. Um, Who's the coach again at this point? Is it Nor- North Turner? Oh wow! Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So North, yeah, like legendary. I mean, Antonio Gates, like. Eric Weddle, I mean, like, you got all these guys in the locker room, and like, wow, like, I literally, like, seeing you, like, like I grew up watching you guys, and, you know, you, you guys are still in the locker room, and now we're teammates, so, um, yeah, tons of, tons of awesome moments. Um, Did you, you know. get to know Manti Teo at all? Yeah. He's on the team. At the yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he's got controversy around him. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool guy. Or? Yeah, he's, no. He's man- probably one of my favorite players from Notre Dame. Ever. Yeah, no, no, Manti's great, yeah, we, we, we always play cards. Uh, all the time, man. I mean, look, that's the thing. We play cards all the time in the locker room too. We'd always play. We'd go back and forth. Then every now and then, with Man Ty, he'd be trying. He, he'll be, be jabbing into me. I'd be like, all right. Well, you remember who won? Yeah. You remember who won, right? They'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just like, hey. He's like, I had twenty tackles that game. I'm like, <laughs> but you still lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I kind of always held that over him. But no, nah, I mean, Man Ty, man, he was such a cool dude. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, because people still bring up the, the thing with the girlfriend and stuff. And I remember, like, when it broke on ESPN, I went, what's going on here? But honestly, what a year he had that year. Like, yeah. he, he was Dude, unbelievable. I mean, man, man on fire. Like, yeah. beast. What's it like sacking Peyton Manning, taking him down? Yeah, so. Or is that just, like, that's got to be. Yeah. Or, or is it just another day at the office? No, 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 no. That was not another day at the <laughs> yeah. office. That was. Rookie year, um, so I mean, de- so I don't know if you guys know anything about football, which I'm sure most of you guys do. You know, defensive line, you know, is a position where you guys rotate a lot. So even if you don't start, you know, you could still play significant snaps. And, and at the time, that was my role. I was coming off the bench, you know, probably playing, you know, 40% of the game. Still a good amount, but um, um, so the guy ahead of me actually uh, tweaked his groin uh, during warm-ups. But I mean, you have no idea. But you always got to prepare. So it's like, boom, just like that. Hey, you're you're in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> boom. You know. Um, so like, but like when you are the starter, you you're now in on all the the nickel packages, all the third and longs, all the all the sack, you know, um, opportunity downs. And, um, so I was in. You know, it was I think might have been third quarter. And um, you know, we're just. I mean, I mean, it was prime. You know. Prime, you know Denver Broncos, Peyton. Yeah, because they're not um, doing a Super Bowl. If it's not that year, it's yeah. I mean, rest, rest in peace, uh, Demarius Thomas. Yeah. But I mean, that team, Wes Welker was over there. Eric Decker, like, we'll talk about a well-oiled machine. Like that, you know that that's what we're up against. And um, but yeah, so the opportunity came. We we had a little uh, stunt. We actually ran the stunt wrong. So sometimes when you make a mistake, but you do it at 100 miles an hour, yeah. um, you know, good things happen. So uh, ran the stunt wrong, ended up shooting through, um, you know, and, and got Peyton. Uh, he actually, I was so scot-free, he actually kind of almost, you know how Peyton towards the end of his career yeah. started to kind of like, all right, if you got me dead to rights, I'm going to give it to you. So he, yeah. pretty, he pretty much gave it to me. Um, so, yeah, that was it. I'm like... Yo, just got a sack. Like, <laughs> yeah. going nuts. Um, then the next drive, <coughs> two plays later, now you're, like, full of confidence. I'm like, all right, you're going. I try, you know, I was trying to, you know, work the edge, you know, the whole game. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to bull rush this guy. I'm just going to freaking run him over. 
boom, I think his foot got caught, falls over, boom, got the second one against Peyton. So this is, you oh, know, two, play, tech, yeah. like two, two plays later. Um, we actually ended up losing that game. But uh, I mean, I was I was happy. That's gotta be something. You just yeah, don't it was just, about, you know. yeah, it was one of those moments where I'm like, man, it's not we won, but yo, I just got two sacks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> OTV on, on a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, my first two were against Peyton Manning. So that's awesome. Uh, I remember seeing the picture, being like, no, we got him. Yeah. Because I don't think we got the game in New England, so I don't know if we could have watched it live. Yeah. Two West Coast teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was that's unbelievable. Overall, did you enjoy your time in the NFL? Oh, definitely enjoyed it. I mean, it just just like anything. I mean, injuries suck. Um, but as for you know everything else that came with it, being able to do what you love, uh, you know, put all your hard work and dedication into something, and you know, see the result of it. Um, you know, all the relationships you know that I had with you know players, coaches, support staff. Uh, it was incredible, you know. Obviously, still wish I was playing, but you know that's, you know that's life. You know, very very few people retire because they want to. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's for whatever factors. Mine, you know, was was an injury, but you know that's that's part of the game. You know, I I played with, there was guys I played on my college team that you know that should have should have played on Sundays, but you know they got hurt. So it's you know so from when I look at it from that standpoint, I was definitely blessed to even. Be able to play the games I played before, you know, you know, my my injury came. So now living in all these different places because you played on, I think, four different teams. Yeah. Still decide I was like New Hampshire is where I want to be. Is yeah. It so any better than living here. I love it here. Yeah. So <laughs> I was actually just explaining this to someone. Yeah. So, um, so did four years in San Diego, and uh, just just signed a signed a deal to the. To now the, the Washington football team, so we'll, we'll we'll call them Washington football team. Yeah, we don't. We're a family show. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Name anymore. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so the Washington football team, but so the thing was, so me and my wife were already married. We have a kid, so whenever we would come back home, we would like we would stay in my childhood room. Yeah. Um, or we would stay in my wife's room, but I'm just like, there's three of us. <laughs> yeah. Like there's like, I mean, like we, we we got a kid. Like we need it. We need to get we need to get a place. So we bought a small, small lake house, little two bedroom. Uh, didn't want to get anything big, just because we knew we're not gonna be here, yeah. you know, f- for that long. Um, so I'm like, and it's fine. I'm like, cool, it's on the lake, perfect. Uh, so we ended up buying a small little lake house. Um, then, then obviously when I got hurt, you know, we already have a place, so we kind of just naturally just settled down. But I mean, we had more kids, and both of our families were here, so it, it ended up working out, um, you know, the right way. Yeah, no, I don't. Play. I, I don't think I could be away from my family. I, like I, I want. Oh yeah, I mean, especially your guys' family. You <laughs> yeah. guys are so you guys are so so tight too. So yeah. I mean, it's tough enough. Mike living in Waltham. It's like, man, you 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 really got to be forty five minutes away. Come like on, Mike, man. come on, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> uh, we got some fan questions. Uh, first is a shout out from Ange D Shard. She's saying Merry Christmas, Kendall and family from the D Shards. She's part of, you know, do you know Ange well? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the whole D-Shark There's crew. a whole clan of them. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, such an awesome family. No, no, I, lo- I love me some D-Sharks. And so. her son's doing really well at football. He yeah. He just won a, Merrimack won a uh, Merrimack uh, Cardinals. I forget the age bracket, but they just won the state There was a few. I, so I went to their practice a couple weeks ago, and there was, I know, the youngest group, like the young ones, they already won the Super Bowl. Then they had... I think like three out of four teams were like, <laughs> were all like number one seeds. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so did they, that age group ended up they winning? They ended up winning. Or? And she hits me up the night before going, I need someone to call the game. I, I, call, I do play by play on yeah. slow pitch softball games. Yeah. <laughs> I've never called a football game, but yeah. I said, you know what, Ange? I have the right guy for you. I contact my dad, said, Merrimack Cardinals need an announcer. He goes, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and they loved him. He used to, he's always been a big, you know, announcing sports. Oh, event, yeah, so yeah, yeah. They were, he, I guess he did a real job, a good job, because I saw all the comments on Facebook, like, where's this guy been? We could have been using him. Right. So, um, last one from your friend John Taylor. He just wants to know, uh, how fast is your 40, kid? <laughs> JT, uh, faster than yours. Let's just put it. Let's just put that out there. And, um, yeah, I mean, whatever. You can, you can go screw off. I know, <laughs> and I know I, I'm very close with his brother Pat. Yeah. So I I don't know John J. He goes by JT though. Yeah, JT. Yeah. 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 
Um, Ray's family field day. Yeah. Now this has been going on, been going on like a decade at this point. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Last year was the eighth. Would have been the ninth uh, because of COVID. But um, yeah. So uh, yeah. Pretty much after my rookie year. Oops, sorry. I was just messing with the mic. Um, We're good, Justin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, pretty much after my rookie year, I I wanted to do something. Um, I wanted to give back. I uh, wasn't sure, you know, how I was going to do it, but I was just like, you know what? Let's just have a day for the kids. Um, but they go out, have fun. You know, we're, we're able to kind of, you know, preach some good habits, you know, with, you know, you know, staying active and, you know, um, healthy eating. But also, I'm just like, I just want to give a bunch of stuff away. Um, like, you know, you know, good portion of the kids, you know, don't have, you know, the opportunity to maybe to get some of the, you know, some, some things like that. So I just like, I wanted to treat it like almost in my head, uh, like Christmas in July. Let the let the kids go out, have fun, know that someone loves them, knowing that we could always give back. Um, but also like, hey, you know, it's a cool opportunity to, you know, win some prizes. I mean, and I think it might have been the second year we started doing bikes. Um, and like, you know, like kids, families, people were in tears. Like some of these kids never had a bike before or they all shared one. And like, uh, you know, this whole family, you know, walked out with bikes. So it was just like. It's one of those things where it's like, man, when you see, you know, the impact that it makes, and it's it's just one day, it's just one small, you know, when in the grand scheme of things, but um, you know, it's it's a great event, and you know, I, I love doing it, and uh, yeah, so that that's that's when it started. Awesome. Yeah. I, and it's it's got because I've always said if I ever win the lottery, National Boys and Girls Club is going to get a real big check. One yeah. Day. Uh, if I ever, which I'll probably never will, but if yeah. I did, uh, there is affiliation. Was there affiliation with the Boys and Girls Club with that, or at some point, or something? Yeah, so it's it's run at the okay. Boys and Girls Club. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm technically considered a volunteer over yeah. there. Um, yeah, so we've been been doing with the Boys and Girls Club uh, every year. One of the best. I mean, honestly, yeah. there for all different types of. Uh, that's where yeah. I started wrestling. Yeah. Um, I worked at Lead Street for a while. We had a lot of kids go there. I I couldn't speak higher. Uh, of the boys and girls club. yeah i mean they, they do they do incredible work and you know i mean at some point i mean they almost touch every every kid in the city whether it's just after school program for a year or two or you know you go there and some kids go there every day um you know they're there there's some there's something out there you know for for everyone so i mean they're doing what they're doing is incredible and then what can families ex expect when they attend? Um, other than that, like, what are the events that you do? And, yeah, and so we, we make small tweaks every year, um, depending on, you know, multiple multitude of factors. But, um, yeah, really it's, you know, we're talking probably like elementary, just getting into middle school age kids. Um, so we, what do we do? We always have like a bounce house. We do like a water balloon fight. Um, we always do like musical chairs. We always do like... Um, obstacle course um we have this water frisbee relay that we do every year um i've i mean i've been doing it for quite a few years so i've I've, <laughs> I've done knockout i've done like oh, capture gosh, the flag i've done knockout. like i've done all types of games but some of those bigger games are a little harder to coordinate yeah. when kids are coming through so we kind of we try to the, we stick to the formula of simple but fun and um you know mo it, and so it's like i don't have to like sit up and like explain you know, five pages worth of rules to a kid. He'd be like, "All right, go over there. You go over there. I'll blow the whistle." Yeah. You know, so those so those games, you know, the kids the kids really love. So, yeah. Then yeah. Oh, do like a dunk tank and give out food and and all the other stuff too. So it's cool. That type of stuff. So, I mean, I used to work like in the schools. I mm -hmm. used to run a summer camp. I'll tell you, like some it is. It's more like the kids can go do it, and the adults just become crowd control. Yeah. You know. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've definitely been through that. Oh, then we had one year where we had, we almost had too many kids come. Um, we, we had over 260 kids there. Oh, wow. And which was like, yeah, it's great. Like, on, you know, it sounds good, but it was just like, I, we almost needed triple the amount of volunteers to be able to handle that volume. So it kind of sits in between, probably say in most years, pretty between like 80 and 120 kids. That's kind of like the the sweet spot. Um, we've had you know 180, like I said, over like 200, um, you know, which is which is great. But you know, it definitely gets a little big. So we we want the you know the kids that kind of you know really really enjoy have a 
have a great time while they're there. So we kind of keep it around around a hundred, awesome. hundred kids. Yeah. Well, I, I've never volunteered. I've I've known my I think my dad's volunteered before or something. So if you ever need any extra help. Oh, absolutely. Definitely, yeah, definitely absolutely. Let me know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was gonna ask too uh, of topic. One other thing I know, because kind of see you on on billboards now. Yeah. Uh, St. Joe's, how did you get involved with the St. Joe's Hospital? Yeah, so, um, so that all started, how did it start? So, actually, John Good, one of the guys that I do, you know, he has, like, a memorabilia place, um, so, through, through the event. So, also with the, the field day, I do, so that's all for the kids. I do a charity event, uh, for the adults to raise money for scholarships. So, we pay for, you know, scholarships or the kids to, you know, for secondary education. Um, but, you know, I believe the St. Joe's reached out to them and they're just looking for, like, somebody to work in the community. Um, you know, they're probably looking for, like, a Patriot player. Or <laughs> ah, who knows? But um, anyways, my, my name kind of came across the table. Um, and then I sat down, met with them, and I was just like, you know, um, you know, I love giving back to this community. And, and, and you know, anything I can help you guys do to, help promote what you guys are doing, what you guys are doing in the, the community. I was like, a lot of this stuff I'm going to do on my own anyways. Yeah. So um, for us to align like that and do it together, you know, kind of it, bring, it brings more more power to the table. So, yeah, that's how it came about. And, uh, yeah, then <laughs> we had a meeting, and they are like, yeah, we're going to throw you up on a billboard. I kind of thought it was a joke. Yeah. And um, next thing you know, I'm getting some texts. I'm like, oh, yep, yeah, there, there, there's my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm driving down. I'm going to Target, and I'm like, oh, and that reminds me, I go, I still got to get Kendall on the show. I, like, <laughs> yeah. I think I sent you a text and said, hey, I just saw your face on a billboard. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do, yeah, send I do remember a message. that. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> uh, very awesome. And, I, and, and a shout out to St. Joe's. Not pushing people to go there, Justin. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> they did repair. Dr. Tom there repaired my shoulder when yeah. I tore my rotator cuff. There we go. Uh, it was a lot more damage than Dr. Tom realized. Uh, but he was able to put me back together with cadaver tissue. So shout out to Dr. Tom. I don't even know if he's still there. But um, let's get into some top fives here. This okay. is a segment of the show we love to do. Yeah. Um, we love pop culture here. Okay. Do you have a top five favorite movies? Top five if you favorite can only have movies. Five movies. All right. So definitely on my list, my like top movie is um, up there is movie Life. With uh, Eddie Murphy, oh, yes. Martin Lawrence, uh, that's up there. Um, the Wood, with uh, Omar Epps, that's up there. So that was that too. Um, as for movies and life, they never actually. You think they're gonna get out, and then they, if I remember this movie correct. No, nah, they. I, they, I don't want to spoil alert. Sorry. I mean, the movie's been out <laughs> since 1998. Yeah. So I feel like I've seen it. <laughs> And uh, yeah. what a dream team there. Yeah, no, yeah. it was, uh, man, it's a, it's a classic. Um, no, that, so the, the, those two for sure. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could go any direction with, with, with the other ones. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm a huge Denzel, Can't go huge wrong. Denzel fan. So, I mean, honestly, any of his movies from, like, Remember the Titans to, you know, Hurricane to... Jeez, I mean, what's what's the other ones? I, I can't even name them. And Training Day, she, oh Malcolm God, X, Day. Uh, Jeez, yes. um, Philadelphia. I mean, I'll I'll put Training Day up there, for sure. Uh, speaking um, of that, did you vote for what? Because you got, did you guys get to vote for the the mascot of Nashville North? Or was that uh, a great? I lower? think so. I re I remember the vote. Okay, because Titans obviously that yeah. movie was big. Yeah. And Titans, I think, won overwhelmingly for, yeah. the, for the news. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess that was all during the Tennessee Titans. Remember the Titans? Like the hype of kinda, all the yeah, Titans yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During, during that time. Uh, so what I got? I got... You got three here. I got Life. I got The Wood. I got... What I, let's, Tra- let's, let's go training, training Day. Training, let's go Training Day. He was the villain the first time there, too. I just want to point yeah, that out. Yeah. No, that was good. <laughs> um... Man, I mean, now I'm just thinking about all the Denzel right now. <laughs> Shoot, I mean, I'm definitely gonna miss a classic just, just cause. Um, oh, another good movie I watch all the time. Jeez, I can't even think of it. Oh, well, it's losing my head. I, I could. Anyways, I'm not. But um. Shoot. 
This is actually a tougher question than I thought. This is a tough one. Yeah, I've had people bring you... notes because they're like, oh, I'm not going to remember this. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, was, I probably should have. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Let's just go. Um, American Gangster. I'm sorry. I'm stuck on Denzel right Another now. Another good Denzel movie. Uh, and Remember the Titans. Remember the, Yeah, I mean, uh, Remember the Titans is one sports movie I could just watch. Sometimes yeah. I'll be on YouTube and be like, you know, I just want to hit, yeah. see this clip again yeah. or that. Um, where, what are your top five TV shows? Could be all time, could be what you're watching right now. Top yeah. five TV shows? Well, actually, I just watched um, a TV show um, with Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes. Uh, it was oh, a true wow. story. Wesley Snipes back? Yes, oh, wow. true story. Okay. All right. You gotta watch it. <laughs> you gotta watch it. Um, so, yes, that up there. I mean, to go back to a classic, uh, Breaking Bad. For sure, um, definitely watch all of those. Um, what else was I stuck on? Um, I think The Wire. Well, I, I yeah. that's been a hot debated topic on yeah. the show because I never gave it a chance. Yeah, I have now watched the first season. I need yeah. to watch the rest, yeah. but I did enjoy it. Yeah, so that's up there. I mean. I mean, True Detective. I think so. I'm, so, so this is, I love one season shows just because you could, you know, it comes to a conclusion. Like, so where I think where a lot of TV shows go wrong is okay, they have success. Now they're just trying to they're stringing along the storyline, and it's just like you get into season four or five. Like, it was, you're always like, man, the first two three seasons were great. Then it kind of. They run out of ideas. Yeah, yeah they fade it off. I'm like, honestly, you just need to kill a show where, when it's not good. Like, like, if your show is only meant to be three seasons, give them three damn good seasons. <laughs> or, like, if it's only meant to be one season, end it there. Well, that was the beauty of uh, True Detective, because they would just yeah. do different. The second season, though, I will never support that. Uh, I can't remember which Vin, one. It's Vince Vaughn. Okay. Colin Farrell. Oh God! Was that the when they were over the in notebook. California, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, at the time, I was, I had, I was dating this girl, and I was like, no, 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 trust me, like this show's great after the first season. Every time someone, I'm, it's gonna get good. It's gonna yeah, get yeah. good. And then I was like, mm. <laughs> yeah. it's not getting good. <laughs> yeah. um, the th they, they did another one. Yeah, it was like the first and the third were like the, the good. Third, one. Yeah. yeah, I own those seasons. Yeah, the first is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, shows. I mean, like Bosch, that show is awesome. Um, Narcos, that's great. That's on Netflix. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the, the older ones I used to watch from back in the day. Were you ever into The Sopranos? That's like a big, so, big favorite show. Of, no, but uh, I, the show I wanted to get on, but The Sopranos used to be on Netflix. Yeah. And then, then I, I never came around to it. Then it got pulled off Netflix, and I don't know. I just I didn't go through the hoops to actually go watch it, but I know I need to watch it. It's like I like it's it's it's. You won't regret you know, it. Yeah, it's on deck. Like, I, <laughs> like, but like, I know I'm gonna have to commit to it too. Yeah. Um, so no, that that's definitely on there. Um, but yeah, like classic shows, like Martin, Fresh Prince. I mean, those are shows that I like, you know, that I grew up on. Um, so yeah, a little, little bit of everything. Loved Fresh Prince. I yeah. think everything I need to know about life I learned from uh, Uncle Phil. Oh yeah. Not Doctor Phil, Uncle Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, do you have a top five uh, musical albums? Top five albums. So I go, I usually rate stuff by how much I actually listen to it. So it might not actually be, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might know one album could be technically or whatever debated better, but like, I mean, you go by, I mean, you go by how much you listen to it. I mean, like, I'm a huge, um, you know, Drake, Jay-Z, J. Cole uh, fan, so automatically... You know those those albums, um, you know, get put up there. Uh, Reasonable doubt. Yes. Jay Z. Unbelievable. Um, for Drake's album, <laughs> I, I, can, I don't know. I didn't remember the name. What's the one where he, he's like in a blue cloud? Yeah, I own that. I bought that. Uh, it came out in 2013. Yeah, yeah. So that one. Yeah. I can't. I don't know. I, I love that one too. That that one. Started um, from the bottom. Now we're here. I yeah. He was on that. Yeah. Um, you know, like pound cakes on there yet? Yeah. Uh, for J Cole. Um, it was Four Seal Drive. Yep. Um, I mean, incredible album. I feel like I've missed the J. Cole, J. Cole era. Yeah. I don't know how, 
I, I couldn't tell you a song that he sings. I know it's probably somebody I like because I love R&B. Yeah. I don't know how I've missed, like, I feel like I've missed his career I mean, somehow. Yeah, I mean, you... you, you I don't know you, how. It's you, just it's you, getting you older. You, yeah, no, you can't... You, you can't you're going to miss something. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to miss something. Um, uh, so what are those three right there? Um, then for classics, I mean, Biggie... I mean, just growing up, like, at a amount of times as I listen to, you know, Biggie's album. Um, Ready to Die is my favorite album yeah. of all time. Ready to Die, like, I've, I've probably had it in, like, every format you could have that. Yeah. <laughs> you could have that album. Um, and for the last one, number five, who I listen to the most. Um, you know what? This is kind of a different direction, but it probably truly is how much I listen to it. Um, Usher, his, I think, I think it's eight seven zero one. I don't even know what the number is. Eight seven zero one. Yeah, and then, is, uh, are then those he did numbers? Confessions three. Yeah. Years later. So yeah, those two. Like honestly, those. Confessions is the greatest R and B album yes. of that time. Period. Yeah, exactly. So those are just the amount of them I listen to those are probably my, my top five in there yeah. oh I love Usher yeah. I mean since I remember when he first came out people are gonna go listen to this Usher album yeah. after watching this because they're like oh yeah wait Usher was like he crushed it I, I'm in this R&B group on Facebook and people go back and forth yeah. and they're comparing Usher's confet and I said listen stop right now the best R&B album of the 2000s was Confessions I'm not arguing about this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's like... That's what you want to have an R&B album, you know? Had everything. Um, let's get into my favorite segment of the show, which is Blank versus Blank. We don't prep the, the guests on this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you two things. you got to pick one and tell me why. Okay. All right, so you grew up in Nashville. I believe you live in Wyndham now? Yes, I live in Wyndham, yeah. All right, Nashville or Wyndham? Like for sports or whatever, you gotta keep one and get rid of one. Oh god! <laughs> I mean, I'll go to Nashua so I don't get shot. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> um, did you enjoy your time more in college or the pros? Um, I say college for for different reasons, but yeah. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I need why. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean it's, you know, we we're all. I mean, we walked in as kids and we came out as young men but you know like i mean life you know pretty much changed during that time and you know this is the first time you're out on your own and you know a lot of my you know best friends are you know you know from that time period so you know college was definitely an awesome experience does is there like a difference to, between like because i always wonder this about when people make you know pro sports college you're in college you're, you find out who you are this is still like a passion yeah. Does, does it feel like a job when you're playing pro sports or you still feel like you're playing sports out of love of it? Well, I mean, it's just different because it's when you're like, yeah, I mean, 100% you're, you're playing for the love of it. But now, just like when you leave college, uh, you now have all this added responsibility on top of it. Now it's like I'm paying bills. I'm doing all this other stuff. There's pressure. What I do is on TV. Like there's, yeah. there's high, high, high expectations. Uh, I'm not saying there wasn't high expectations in college, but it's just you know it's different. Um, and you know, in in college, I mean, for the most part, your locker room, you know, stays the same. Like your class, you come in with, you know, you're gonna be with them for five years. In the NFL, like from my rookie year to my second year, I mean, we had like 30 different guys on the team. Yeah, you know, so it's just like. You know, there's the constant, you know, you know, it's always different. You know, teams always change and, and all that other stuff. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just different. But, I mean, I, I definitely enjoyed both. Yeah. Um, definitely. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Now we ask everybody this question. Okay. It's a hot button question. Who is more responsible for the success of the New England Patriots for 20 years? Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? Who's more responsible? Who's more responsible for their success? Oh, that's an easy question. Bill Belichick. Spoken like a true New Englander. I like it. <laughs> no, I mean, that's just like, who's more responsible? It's, yeah. the, it's the coach. Yeah. But, I mean. And they, GM. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. But, like, no. I, I mean, the, the coach is more responsible. He still had to put all that together. I mean, you think about the years that the Patriots actually won it. Don't get me wrong, you have Tom Brady on your offense, but it's their defense and their special teams that were ranked among top 
in the in the NFL, the years that they actually won, um, would they have won all those without Tom Brady? Absolutely not. But if you said who was more responsible, I'd probably say Bill Belichick because he's responsible for Brady too. No, you know, I, he he has, he has some he has some. You I know. I agree with that take. A lot of people yeah. that are not Patriot fans always say Brady because they were so happy that Bill Belichick had a rough year last year. Yeah. Um, did you ever get to play against the Patriots at all? Yeah, we played against them in uh, 2014. 24. Okay. Yeah. I yeah I must have known that and forgot, but um yeah unbelievable run by the Patriots. Um, now, do you play for the Chiefs in the Washington football team, um, both for a year or two years? So actually, so when I was with, when I was in Washington, I got hurt. Um, so I missed a few games. When I came back, I got released and I got picked up from Kansas City. So that was all okay. The same year. So when you, yeah. would you rather? What city do you like better? Um, if you were to just hang out in one of them. I mean, to hang out. I mean, DC, no doubt. Um, I mean. Kansas City is great and all, but it's not not, not, not that much. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's cool. It's actually it, it's better than you think it would be. But uh, I mean DC's DC's a really really. You know, I love fun... Tim Hogan lives there. Yeah, love visiting. DC is a fun place to go visit. Tons of culture down there. Um, but yeah, I would say DC. And please, The Rock, bring the XFL back because I want to go back to some DC Defender games. <laughs> um, if you had to choose, would you rather watch basketball or hockey? Basketball. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's... Are you a Bruins fan at all? Yeah, so, I mean, I like the Bruins. I want them to win. I might not watch a game until the playoffs. Okay. And then again, I might only watch a period or two and check the score. Do I want them to win? Absolutely. But, I mean, you know, it's just, it, it ain't for everybody. I'm not going to lie. I can only get into the playoffs. I, str- I, yeah. I cannot follow hockey all year long. Yeah. I, I mean, I, even with the Celtics, I mean... When I can catch it, I mean, I'm, I got, you know, three little kids at home, so I'm pretty yeah. busy. But, yeah, I mean, I'll watch a few games, I don't know, a handful throughout the year. But once it gets to playoff time, I'm, you know, I'm trying to watch it, watch every game, so. Yeah, we're going next Wednesday. I can't wait because I haven't been since the pandemic. Who are, they, uh, who are they playing? I don't even know. Tim Hogan got the tickets. You're just going. I was just like, yeah, I'm in. He's like, I got, yep, I'm in. I'm in. Oh, $45? Yeah, I'm in. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, who means more to New England, Tom Brady or David Ortiz? Who means more the, to New England? This as a whole of the region. I mean, I'll say Tom Brady. Okay. Oh, yeah, you need the why. Yeah. I mean, you got six rings. Don't get me wrong, David Ortiz is the man, and he was, if you ask me who was my favorite, you know, athlete, I always, I would, during that, you know, time, I would always say David Ortiz. He's just cool. Like, you, you feel like you just have a great-ass time hanging out with him. No one's but, cooler. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, I mean, he's cool on the other side of the pillow, let's be real. But, yeah, Tom Brady, hands down. He's he's the best, you know, no doubt. The only thing I ever give to Ortiz is, though, when he took that mic, that and we were there, and yeah. he said, this is our bleeping city, and no one's going to, and I was like, David, statue. Make him yeah. a statue right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, rather watch WWE or NASCAR. Uh, Knowing what a fan I am of WWE, <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> WWE. I mean, I mean NASCAR. I feel like from what I heard, it's it's a crazy experience going to it. Actually, my brother went, and he was just like he was couldn't even believe how much fun he had. Um, but I mean, it's a car going around in a circle. I mean, yeah, it's not n- not not to. <laughs> n- I mean, if you love NASCAR, that, you know more power to you. But yeah, I mean WWE. I mean, I mean, especially you know in our neighborhood, that was. We were playing football, or whatever, or, or we're wrestling in Pat Nod's you know, <laughs> yeah. backyard, jumping off of landing on a mattress, and you know whatever it was. Uh, yeah, so I mean, especially like the era we grew up in, nineties. That's I mean that's when it was at its height. I mean, everyone was getting stunned and you know all types of moves done to them. So uh, definitely wrestling. WWE. Yeah, we had a lot of backyard stuff going on. Yeah. Um, do you watch the the Manning po- uh, cast at all? No, I've seen like little clips. Uh, I haven't I haven't been able to sit down and watch the whole thing, but I have seen clips of you know who who was on there. Like, did they have Brady on there? And, they have like, had Brady. Then um, Marshawn Lynch. Oh God, he's hilarious. Dude, he's hilarious. Yeah. It, 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 just out of the clips you've seen, who's more entertaining, Eli or Peyton? I mean, come on, Peyton. He's got more personality. Yeah, I mean, we that 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 was a layup. Eli's on his coattails. Yeah. I just love the Manning cast. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, last one, toughest one, 
Two friends of yours. This is the toughest one in blank for, versus blank. We don't put your feet to the fire on this one. <laughs> Steve Pelletier or John Taylor? Well, I mean, who am I? You got to keep one. <laughs> got to keep one? Oh, God. Jeez. We've made Bobby say mom or dad. He, he didn't blink, said mom, but. <laughs> <laughs> Steve or JT, that's fucked up. Um, we, again, we don't put your feet to the fire here on this one. The other ones we will. I'm going to say JT just to piss off Steve. I love, <laughs> like, there, there, there's, you know, like, there's a friend that you just love pissing off. Yeah. That's Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks like you guys had a blast in Buffalo. Oh, right? yeah. No, we, we had a great time, though. We, we definitely had a blast uh, out there in Buffalo. So I was like, I wanted to see the Bills out. I mean, it was a, it was a game later, later in the year, um, but it was so windy. So yeah. it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't the true experience. There was definitely still some crazy people still out there, but no, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go back next year, earlier in the year. I'm trying to. I mean, I just want to see someone go through a table. I have I have been through a table there. I just want everybody <laughs> to know that I w- I had infiltrated the Bills Mafia. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, shout out to Steve and JT, we both great guys. Uh, <laughs> but Kendall, I really appreciate coming on. This has yeah, been a blast. Appreciate it. Yeah. Love to have you back sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, everybody out there, uh, continue to uh, keep your heads up. You're asked to wear a mask. Just wear a mask. We're saying get vaccinated. But uh, until next time, let freedom ring. Let's go.